Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Inspirational Thursday. I'm here on behalf of Class Act. My name is Liz and I will be your host this evening. So um, I'll give everyone a minute or two to kind of filter in and then we will jump right into things. But for tonight's video, as soon as I saw this, I knew immediately I wanted to work with it. I am going to be playing around with the Pink Fresh Best Wishes uh, stamp, die, and stencil set. So we're going to do a couple different uh, things. Maybe do a card and a scrapbook layout, like a 12 by 12 layout. Um, and then maybe some with just stenciling and some with some stamping as well. So it's going to be fun. Hey, Sandra. Hi, Carol. Thanks for joining, guys. Um, so yeah, without any further ado, <clears throat> I now have two audience members. I'm just going to get my stuff ready. So first things first, I feel like I'm just going to stamp the actual stamp down. Um, so here I have my Hampton Arts stamp perfect platform and I'm going to be using the Pink Fresh Best Wishes stamp set. Uh, I feel like I'm going to use the, the flower border die stamp, sorry, and then the sending love sentiment. For this first one. Alrighty. <clears throat> and then the next thing I'm going to need is a piece of paper to work on. <laughs> so bear with me while I grab that as well. Silly me. Is it Friday yet? <laughs> All right. Got some little scrap papers here to work with. Okay, we are officially ready to go. Hi, Lynn. She said it looks like a pretty stamp set. It is beautiful. As soon as I saw it in the unboxing, I knew immediately I wanted to play around with this because it looks so versatile. So, um, hang on. If I show you guys here. So, not only does it have all these beautiful sentiments which come with well, don't come. They sell separately, but have a coordinating die. Um, so best wishes, sending love, and just a note. Uh, it also <clears throat> cuts all of these flowers separately. So you can do this beautiful frame effect. Um, it looks really nice vertically, horizontally. Um, but I figured you could also use it for like a layout as well as cards. Um, and I just thought it would be a lot of fun to play with. So that's what we're doing tonight. I... <laughs> Didn't have anything in mind until Tuesday when I opened it, and uh, I was like, we're going to play with this for sure. So, <clears throat> really quickly, I'm just going to ink up my stamp. Um, I like the archival ink, but you guys can use pretty much any ink with the Pink Fresh. I know Pink Fresh also has their own inks. Uh, I unfortunately only have two colors of them, so... I'm using archival ink tonight, and I'm also going to be using the uh, Tim Holtz Distress Minis. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Jennifer. Stella. Thank you guys so much for watching me. For joining me on this adventure, I should say. So there we go. Hopefully that... Eh, we're just going to re-ink it and try again. I am a horrible stamper. If you guys have any tips. I know the stamping platform is like a lifesaver for me because I generally never get it quite right on the first try. I don't know if others struggle, but I am not a great stamper. Don't, don't tell. Um, yeah, I don't like that. I'm just gonna flip it over and try again. Wait a second. Okay, this time it should work. I promise it's not, not as difficult as I make it look. All right. Third time's a charm. There we go, that's much better. Okie dokie. So, I'm just going to set this off to the side. 
But I now have a stamped image and a little sentiment here to work with. Um, so I'm thinking for this card, I feel like I want to blend a background. So maybe I'm going to start with the background and then um, that'll make it easier to decide what colors I'm going to actually work into my project. Hey, Linda, long time no see. Hope you're doing well. Um, all righty. So I'm thinking scattered straw because I like the the yellow color and I'm just going to use one of my blending brushes and I'm just going to start by making this really crazy background. Now if it's not beautiful, I'm not worried because I'm going to be throwing vellum on top of this anyway for this first card. So that was scattered straw. Up next, I'm gonna try some sponge sugar. It's like a beautiful light pink color. So yes, don't be alarmed if my background is a little eh. <laughs> we'll see the magic happen once I add vellum over top of it. Then, if that wasn't enough pink, I'm going to go in with Victorian Velvet, which is like this beautiful dusty rose color. Maybe I'll do that down here at the bottom. And some salvaged patina for like my bluey color for my background. So I'm going to make a card. <laughs> this one is just a regular um, four and a quarter by five and a half. Although this particular set would probably look gorgeous on slimline cards and all kinds of other projects as well, but I'm gonna stick with my regular card size for tonight. All right, so shoddy blending job, but don't be alarmed because this is the Minte Vellum. I believe this one is called like Flower Trellis or something, but when I put it on top, it just like makes everything look so subtle and clean and <laughs> not as shoddy. So <laughs> I'm going to definitely be incorporating some vellum. So there we have it, the background for our card. And now I kind of know what color scheme I want to use on this first project. So the next thing I'm going to do is get my stencils. So the best wishes stencils that comes with four stencils. Um, and they do coordinate with the stamp. So I am just going to line it up. I did notice, um, I made a couple examples beforehand, but I noticed that you have to do like one side and then shift it just a little bit to match it up. I don't know. I'm going to reach out to Pink Fresh and see if that was intentional or if that was a flaw, but <laughs> who knows? We'll find out. Um, so I'm thinking pink for my flowers. So I'm going to start off with the sponge sugar, which is that light pink, and then go in the next stencil with the Victorian velvet. And this is a pink fresh blending brush. It is really nice. It's probably my favorite blending tool in existence. Um, but it's like just, it's got lots of like wiggle room at the top here, nicely packed bristles. And it's just so much fun for like using when you're stenciling. So definitely going to be using that. Now, professional tip. <laughs> yeah, usually they do line up perfectly. So I'm kind of curious as to why it's not. Um, anyway, when you pick up some ink on your brush, if you don't want it to go um, and be too harsh as soon as you touch the paper, I usually start blending 
off to the side and then pull it in. And that gives me like a much softer blend versus like starting right in the middle of whatever I'm blending. So I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> if you're new at stenciling, that's uh, some good advice, I guess. And then I'm just gonna shift this one and do the same thing for this side. Now, silly me, I didn't wipe my stencil down. So I'm getting a bit of like a, a blue color mixed in. Hopefully it turns out nice. <laughs> um, but I should have wiped it down with a baby wipe really quickly. Please forgive me. There we go. For the purposes of what we're doing. So far, so good. And then I'm going to set my stencil number one off to the side. One thing I will point out when you're working with the Pink Fresh stencils, they actually do have in the corner, like number one, number two, number three, and number four, uh, which is really great. So you can actually line them up accordingly, which I find very helpful. And just so I don't make the same mistake, I'm just going to wipe my stencil off really quickly, um, either with a baby wipe or depending on what kind of ink you're using, um, hand sanitizer works really well. So there are my friendly tips for the night. There's number one. This one's number two. And before I even use it, I'm just going to give it a quick wipe. Look at all the color I just picked off. All right. <laughs> so this one is stencil number two. And same idea. I'm just going to line up this side. Yeah, normally their stuff coordinates beautifully. So I don't know if that was a design flaw, but like I said, I'm going to reach out because it's a really beautiful set. So I'm going in with Victorian Velvet over top, and that's just going to bring out some of the um, low lights in the stencil or the flower. And then same thing for this side. I'm just going to line it up. That looks good. And guys, if you are curious, uh, these are magnets, and this is a magnetic glass mat um, from LDRS and or LRDS. Either way, it's uh, it's been a game changer. I really enjoy it. It's a little bit pricey, but I treated myself over the Christmas holidays, and I have no regrets because it's been working really well when I do use my stencils. Uh, it also has a ruler component, so that's been fun. And there you go. It's coming along. I'm just going to wipe my stencil down again and set it off to the side. Now, I'm using the same brush for every color, but if you are um, doing this at home and you're not sure if you how you feel about the colors mixing on your brush, I definitely suggest um, using a different brush for each color that you use or um, giving it a good wipe in between and kind of letting it dry off. Me, I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty free spirited, so I'm just gonna go with it. So stencil number three here. Just gonna line it up to one side. Okie dokie. Actually, that one lines up pretty beautifully all the way around. Maybe it's just the flowers. And I'm gonna go in with some salvaged patina for the leaves. I know what you're thinking. Generally, flowers don't have blue leaves, but for tonight, they definitely do. And I did not do a great job wiping my brush down. 
should have taken my own advice and probably switched because <laughs> it's it's combining with the pink now and we're getting a really crazy sort of color scheme going on but again it'll work with the background because we use all these colors in the background that we blended so I'm okay with that Sandra has commented, it's worth the money. I assume you're talking about the glass mat. And yes, I quite enjoy it. It's uh, It's been great. I used to have like the little Wendy Becky one, which I still do have. And it's great for like if I'm attending an event or something and I want something portable. But I love the look of this on my desk and uh, just the feel. It's been really fun. All right, so there we have number three, which did this sort of cool, smoky blue color <laughs> on my leaves. And last stencil, stencil number four. I'm just going to give it a wipe down. I am thinking maybe we go in with some vintage photo, which is sort of this brown color. And uh, let's live dangerously and see what happens. So I'm just going to use the magnets, stick everything down, and pick up some browns. So it's really quick and easy when you're working with the stencils. Um, if I was coloring this by hand, <laughs> we would probably be here all night. So that is one pro for sure when you're working with a set like this. And there we go. I think I'm pretty happy with that. And ta-da! So it's very pretty. This is uh, what we've come up with. And then here's our background. So I'm actually going to die cut this afterwards and stick it all together but feel like a cooking show um with the magic of my <laughs> skills I actually made one earlier so here we have it and I just sort of kept the frame shape on this card and I popped the sentiment sending love on top of it so um, it's quite nice and quite a fun set to work with. Like I said, it's cool because it actually cuts out four separate components. Um, and then the, the dies are so beautiful because it has this like scripty font and it cuts around them too. So uh, it's great for making your own like little sentiments. You could mass produce them, which is wonderful. Um, so yeah, really fun set. So I'll be putting that one together afterwards, but I just wanted to share it with you guys. Um, and then another card that I played around with earlier today, this one I did using mostly oranges and uh, like yellow mustard colors um, and then greens for the leaves. So I kept it fairly traditional. This one I did without the stamp. So you might notice that it looks a little bit, uh, oh gosh, I don't know what the word is. Different, we'll say different. Um, and then for this one, I tried to make a... Um, like a circle with it, I guess, uh, or a, a wreath. It's not perfect, but it's kind of cute. So it's a very versatile set. And so you can do it with just the stencils and the die, and there's no fussy cutting, um, or you can do it with the stamp stencil and die, and that's a lot of fun as well. So before we shift over to our next one, um, for, tonight's video I also wanted to show you guys that this set would look really good on a layout so I have a 12 by 12 paper here bear with me so this is a new sheet it's from Minte uh, here's what it looks like on the back which is also absolutely gorgeous but I thought this would be kind of cool and it matches sort of matches the background that we blended for the first one so I feel like we're going to work with the 
with the similar color scheme on this one. Um, so yeah, this is going to be our background. Then that beautiful trellis paper that I had, I just cut some photo mats. So this one is, I believe, five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And then this one is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I'll probably do something like this. And then that leaves me room um, afterwards to like do some journaling or maybe do a title or something off to the side. And now we're going to use, I think, the stencil and the die to do something with this. Because it's such a soft background. I'm not going to bother stamping it. I just want to do sort of a, a softer effect, if you will. So just a blank piece of paper here. And I'm going to get myself a clean blending brush. So maybe I don't mix the colors as much this time around. I make no promises. All right. And I'm just going to wipe off my previous brush as well. Okie dokie. All right. So without any further ado, I am going to start with stencil number one. And I'm just going to put it right in the corner because that will make it easy for me to figure out where to line up the next ones. And for this one, because of the paper I'm working with, I'm thinking saltwater taffy, worn lipstick, tumbled glass, and stormy sky for each of the stencils. So I'm going to start off stencil number one with the beautiful peachy colored, peachy pink saltwater taffy. Now again, um, don't start in the middle of your stencil or I don't recommend it anyway. I recommend starting off to the side and then blending in because that way you're not going to get any harsh lines right in the middle of your flower. Trust me on that, I have learned the hard way. Um, another fun tip when you are using stencils is you can always go darker. You cannot reverse and go lighter. So I usually start off nice and light, and then if I feel like I want it to be more saturated, I'll go in and maybe do a few layers. So here we have this beautiful peachy pink saltwater taffy. This is one of my favorite colors from Tim Holtz. It's just so pretty. And I do like it so much, so I'm gonna make it a little bit darker on all of my flowers, but um, if you're happy and you were doing this at home, you could stop whenever you're content with your color scheme. There we go. All right, I'm gonna stop there. Sometimes less is more. Move my stencil number one off to the side, wipe it down really quick so it can start drying. And now we go in with number two. So when you're not using the stamp set, everything lines up beautifully. And I'm going in with worn lipstick as my second color. So look at that color, it's beautiful. There we go. It reminds me of doing makeup, <laughs> but not on your face. Okay, wipe down that brush, take off this, give this a wipe, but it's coming along so far. So far, so good. Layer number three is gonna be these leaves, and I'm gonna do that in a nice light blue also known as tumbled glass. I 
I don't know why I've been a fan of like blue leaves for this particular set, but on the last one I did salvage patina, which is kind of like a bluey green. And then for this one, I'm also doing a blue color. <laughs> It's weird how you're just like drawn to some colors every once in a while. Today, my leaves are blue. <laughs> Jack says, it's makeup for paper. Exactly. Yeah, funny enough, I'm actually much better at the paper makeup than uh, <laughs> my actual face. Another um, fun tip for you guys, if you're new to blending, is um, just doing small circular motions. That tends to get the job done. Um, you can go back and forth as well, but uh, circular motion is, is usually the way to go. It may take a while, but you get everything you need covered. So there we have some beautiful blue leaves for layer number three. And last but not least, let's add some cool stuff to the leaves. <laughs> some veins and stuff, I guess you would call them. So I'm going to go in with the darker blue or the stormy sky color here. And just add some low lights. So anything that you see on tonight's video that you like, or if you want to check out all the pink fresh stuff we carry, definitely check out the website classact.ca. You're going to want to hop on shop and click Inspirational Thursday. I have listed all of the beautiful paper and the brushes and my cute little um, ink case here. <laughs> so pretty much everything I use is linked and then if you want to keep looking at stuff um you can also go to shop and search search by brand and you can look up pink fresh and see all of the the wonderful things that we have from them at the store we also do custom orders so if we're sold out of something or there's something you want uh, shoot us a message, give us a call, and we're happy to try to accommodate. There we go. Ugh, oh, I love the way this looks. It's nice and soft, which is great because so is the paper that I set aside. Okay, so next thing I would do is probably grab my paper trimmer, which is off to the side here. I'm just gonna cut off the excess paper. Bear with me, guys. You'll hear noises. <laughs> All right. A little bit more. There we go. And I'll show you how the die works on this. So essentially, we have this beautiful border die, which lines up with all of it. Eventually, just take some, what is wrong with me? <laughs> just take some fiddling, I guess. So yeah, it lines up beautifully. So there's no fussy cutting required. If you're into fussy cutting, go for it. But if I can find a quick and easy way around it, that's kind of my jam. And then I have the Scotch Removable Magic Tape here. So I love this tape because I can use it again and again and again. And it um, sticks and removes off of my paper beautifully. There are no um, little tears or hiccups. So I've, uh, I've, I used to cheat and use washi tape, but I've learned that uh, investing in that has been well worth it. Hey, Diane, thanks for joining. She said, that's beautiful. It is really pretty. Uh, thank you. I love this set. So now I got to find my machine, which is hiding under my desk. <laughs> I 
I had to make some room for tonight's video. So, move my ink here. So this is just the Big Shot machine. There's going to be a little bit of shaking while I crank this. So, bear with me, folks. If you get motion sick, look away. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to move this guy over here. And just like that, all of these pop out beautifully. And we are left with these cute flowers. Set my die off to the side. So this set is, like I said, quite versatile and stunning. It's great for cards. It's great for layouts. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an arch die, but like I can just imagine this on the top of an arch and like a cute sentiment would look amazing. But yeah, there we go. So we have these flowers cut out. And now if I pull my layout over here, like this. Um, unfortunately, my desk is not big enough to, to show the whole thing, but we'll just pretend. So maybe I'm going to put one flower down here, one over here, one off to the side like this, and then one off to the side like that. Um, that looks pretty. Maybe I want to switch things up and do something like that. Yeah, I think I like that. Um, and like I said, maybe go back in and add more flowers. Um, for instance, here are just some that I made earlier that I didn't love. But <laughs> for the sake of showing and telling, let's just pretend that these are beautiful and not weird colors. And uh, yeah, so you could go in and, and like really frame your photos very nicely. Uh, you can go back and add like a journaling tag here and cover it with flowers too. So <laughs> Carol has commented, if anyone needs this, here is the link. Notice we said need, not want. Haha. -ha. Okay. So yeah, uh, essentially we have done a 12 by 12 layout. We've done a card. Um, and I can imagine there is so much more that you guys can come up with on your own because you guys are all so creative. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share this set with you guys. It's not a long inspirational video, but it was fun. Um, thank you for joining me. I was hoping to have my project finished from last week so I could show you guys. And I did all the pages, but they're not in the album. So um, I don't know. I feel like maybe I'll do a quick separate video on that once I get everything glued together. Uh, but yeah, meanwhile, I'll post the finished projects from tonight. Um, and I hope you guys have an amazing evening. Thank you so much for your time. I will see you all on Tuesday. <laughs> There's lots of new stuff that's just trickled in that I'm working on processing. So uh, stay tuned for that and uh, enjoy yourselves. Go do something crafty. Okay, bye.